Mr. Arrington to strike the last word. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I understand uh, the passion uh, um, and respect that, uh, along with the views of my colleagues and Mr. Pascrell. Uh, the only thing I would say um, that is offensive is when somebody impugns the motives of our colleagues, and in this case, I, and, I, and, and I don't know that you really mean it, but to suggest that Republicans don't really care or want to see people lifted out of poverty is just wrong. We have a different view on how to get there. We don't think government programs are the way to do it. Some distant federal government program where there's all sorts of waste, fraud, and abuse, nameless, faceless bureaucrats running these programs. And we do believe, and I think the data bears this out, it does trap people in a cycle of poverty. It doesn't pull people up and out to be their very best and to and to put into play their God-given talents and maximize their, their earning ability and to have a better life for their families. That's, that's what we've seen all too often, especially when you have welfare without work requirements. I think that's a disservice to the American people, to our fellow Americans, uh, to not give them those incentives. And we see this expansion of welfare and, and entitlements without those basic work requirements and personal responsibility. And it's offensive to people. It's offensive to folks who work hard just to make ends meet and they can't afford health care because somebody had a good idea that government health care was going to solve the access, quality, and cost of care by calling it the Affordable Care Act when it actually doubled the cost of care for working people. And, and the same in, in every space, in every sector where the government had, for whatever motive, decided that the, the, the government was going to be the solution to the problem, which is you know, why we've seen runaway inflation recently. And I can say that that is a direct, direct effect of the massive spending that's occurred just recently in the last COVID bill, $2 trillion, you're going to see more inflationary effects. Uh, you're going to see the debt now accelerated. That's a problem for all of us. I'm not going to give Republicans a pass on the debt, but you're accelerating the debt, which is, I think, the biggest threat to our country. I mean, we're almost $30 trillion in debt. This is not going to pay for itself. The Green New disaster doesn't pay for itself. All of the massive expansion in welfare and entitlements does not pay for itself. So it, we, we've got almost a trillion dollars in annual deficits uh, prior to COVID, um, and none of this is going to go to pay down that, that deficit and accumulating, accumulating debt. It's only going to increase it. I don't see how anybody that has a modicum of fiscal responsibility in, in, in their sort of governing framework could support this. The, the, this I, think it, I think it is terribly irresponsible on so many levels, but the, I think the worst of it is nobody in this committee hearing is going to end up paying for this. It will be our posterity. It will be our children and grandchildren will pay for it at some point. I can't tell you when, but it will happen. There'll be a payday and it will be horrible. And, 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 uh, but, but look, the tax cuts and, and the facts have been articulated by my colleagues already lifted 6 million people out of poverty. And we celebrated that it lowered unemployment to the lowest rate in 50 years. We celebrated that it had the biggest increase in household median income on record. And we celebrated that all boats rose on the tide of prosperity when we allow people to keep more of their hard-earned money, and we allow job creators to invest and create more opportunities. Turns out that's the best way to get people out of poverty. It's the best way to, um, to create wealth creation for folks, upward mobility. And we saw it in record uh, in, in spades, and we, and we saw it in record fashion. And so... Um, we're going to reverse all of that at the worst time, at the worst time.
These job creators are uh, struggling with inflation. They're struggling because, and, and this is directly on my Democrat colleagues from having enhanced unemployment where people got paid more than they were paid in the previous job. And now we're going to put a big tax on them. They can't handle all this. This will be devastating to our economy, devastating to our families. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, thank back. the gentleman.